I'm Sean Clark and welcome to The Collection. Today we're doing something a little different. We're going to do some product like unboxing and semi-reviews I guess. Uh, a company called Paragon FX. They've been making these really cool prop replicas. They sent me some items. They said, hey Sean, want to send you some stuff. Want you to see what we're about. Want you to get it out there for the people. And they were kind enough to send me a few things and we're going to look at those today and uh, check them out. Oddly enough, I had recently just purchased an item from them, so they hadn't shipped that yet. So they shipped a few other things along with the item I purchased. They were kind enough to send them. I'm going to be kind enough to review them. Let's start with Creepshow, the Traveling Ashtray Replica Prop. It's kind of a long title. I would, I would have just called it like Ashtray, Creepshow Ashtray. Creepshow Ashtray Prop Replica. The Traveling Ashtray Replica Prop. I guess they're calling it Traveling because it's in every different segment of Creepshow. So it's traveling from scene to scene. I guess that's what they mean. So, first off, let's talk about how cool this packaging is. This box is dope. I mean, look at this. Now, I took everything out of their shipping boxes, but I haven't opened anything yet. So I'll be seeing this stuff for the first time as you're seeing it for the first time. Now, oddly enough, I own a Creepshow replica ashtray already. Apparently it was molded off of the screen used one. I got it from Chris Saravakis, I think that's how you pronounce his name, who owns the original prop. Uh, so I'm curious to compare the two. That one I believe is resin and painted to look like marble. I heard this is cast out of actual marble, so. Let's see how this looks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's check it out. Ooh, buddy. I mean, it's a nice box. It really is a nice box. It's got a little bubble wrap in there. Let's see how this comes out. Oh, there we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, it, and it's heavy too. Yeah, this is like the real deal, like you would hit old grandpa over the head with. Ah, wow. That looks freaking cool. That really looks cool. It is actual marble. Check this out. I'm not sure what the little cherub is made out of. That might be, I'm assuming, maybe a pewter. Uh, but the the actual ashtray part is definitely a real marble. It's a nice uh, felt bottom there. Oh, you can see, yeah, they, they screwed the cherub in uh, onto the marble ashtray added him in there he looks mad look how mad he looks he look angry most cherubs are are gleeful gleeful is that a word but he looks pissed off basically <laughs> maybe he's not a smoker and who wants to be around a lot of cigarette smoke not me i'm not a smoker but this is really cool look it's got a little little uh placky thing on the bottom here and it says it's an addition of 250 250, yes, Paragon FX, addition of 250. Now, I was talking to the owner of Paragon, and he did inform me, I don't know if I'm talking outside of school on this or not, but apparently about half of these had been damaged, and so there's really only, I think, I think he said maybe only about 100 of these out there, really, um, because a bunch of them had issues, and that's quality control for you and all that stuff. But yeah, he said there was an issue. I think he said it was with actually screwing the cherub to the marble uh, that the marble would crack or something. So apparently that was an issue. But this one looks perfect, looks beautiful. And yeah, it is heavy. You could definitely kill somebody with this thing like they did in the movie. So, very cool. Now let's take a look at this next to the one I had. Might as well since I have it, right? Probably enough, this is exactly where it sits. Uh, normally and here it is much lighter so if this one is molded off of the real one then there's some slight differences obviously the cherub looks very different let's take a yeah he still looks pissed though um, but yeah very cool though I will say even if, if I'm not sure, again, if this is molded off the real one, um, this one would probably be slightly more accurate as far as uh, sculpt and everything. Uh, but 
that paint job is totally whack compared to the real marble. The real marble looks amazing. So definitely a reason to have both in my collection. Notice something like this. They, they have nice little bookends. Look at that. And a little bit higher than the other one too. Yeah, you can see slightly, slightly taller. But if you were to hand me one of each and ask me which one I would want, I think I would want this one. It just looks, the presentation is, and man, seriously holding it, the, the heft on it, uh, it's, it's night and day. I mean, this thing, God, I would say this is at least three pounds, you know, or this maybe a pound at best. Anyway, this is awesome. This I would highly recommend. If you're a creep show fan, this is a must. I mean, not only is it in every segment of the film, it's also in the series. Greg Nicotero has made sure to add this ashtray in every episode somewhere. So this is basically a creep show Easter egg of everything. I don't know if it made an appearance in the in the sequel films, if it made it in part two or not. I don't I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think that was just a part one thing. And part three, nobody cares about that. It's garbage. It's garbage. Taurus, you should be ashamed of yourself. Although they did sign off on this because their name is on the box. Um, so they have some, yeah, Taurus Entertainment. But as far as uh, part three, once again, shame. Shame on you. Yeah, amazing presentation. If you can get one, I highly recommend this piece. Absolutely. My dog is very interested in what's coming up next. No, you need to wait. You need, I know you're a big fan, but you gotta wait, buddy. Second item. What do we got here? In this envelope. It was in a, it was in a envelope like this. This can't be much, right? It's too thin. Too thin to be anything that spectacular. Wrong! It's amazing. At least it should be. I haven't looked at this yet. Everything is me experiencing it for the first time, just like you. This is another prop replica, and here it is. Ooh, buddy. It's a replica of the Dead Walk newspaper from Day of the Dead. Look at that. And, oh, has a, oh, geez. It's got a little, like, header, like it should be hanging in the store. Look at that. I don't know what this retails, um, but it's very cool. I mean, that is, it's definitely... Definitely nice. Now, I, I'm, should I open this? I feel like I shouldn't open it. <laughs> it looks cool like this. I don't want to ruin the packaging. But I guess I should open it. I mean, they sent it to me to review it. I mean, although I can see it. I'm just, I'm going to be bummed if I open it and there's nothing on the inside. Like, this is literally the whole thing. Which I think it is. I don't think they made more than... Let's see if there's a way I can tell. Uh, I don't know if there's anything in there. Ah. Uh, Damn it. All right, I guess I could always staple it back, right? Let me undo the staples. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this carefully. Look at that, I sacrificed my uh, pristine unopened version for you guys just to find out. No, there is stuff on the inside, yay! Yeah, man bites man. Hmm, deserves called to action. Huh. Three hurt and area crashes. Now, interesting that all the stuff in here, if you look, it's all Pennsylvania related, Scranton, Pittsburgh, uh, Harrisburg. Yet this scene, this newspaper appears in, was shot in Fort Myers, Florida. And it obviously looks like it's, it's not supposed to be Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania. Um, I think it was supposed to be Florida because they shot it there right down near the ocean and it looked like a, a beach town, so. I don't know how this newspaper will have made its way from Pennsylvania to Florida on the street during a pandemic, a zombie outbreak, if you will. But this is really cool. Friday, July 9th, 1984. Let's see if there's anything in the middle and no. So you could just lay it all out like this. And for a huge, a huge nerd, you get this thing framed like that, you know. But I think the way to go is probably to have it you know, folded and then crimp, crumble it up a little bit to give it that distressed look like in the movie. But sitting there on the ground, that's rad. 
Very cool. I'm sure this retails very cheap because it's just a piece of paper, you know? It's a thousand dollars. No, I don't know. I don't know how much it retails for. But we'll, we'll, maybe we'll pull up the prices on the website and we'll drop them in here so people know what they can get this for. I believe this was made off of Greg Nicotero's personal copy, I think. I think. I'll have to double check on that. Replica newspaper prop. Very cool. Officially licensed. Is this also Taurus? This, uh, yep, Taurus. Part three, Taurus. Why? Why did you do that? Creep Show 3. Why? You don't see anybody selling any Creep Show 3 replicas, right? There's a reason, bro. There's a reason. Next, we're going to get to the Phantasm 2 Christmas Ornaments. Now, this is not a prop replica, although they make a kick ass Phantasm 2 sphere, which a little birdie told me one might be floating my way pretty soon. But these are Christmas ornaments. Let's take a look. I like the Christmassy. The tall man would be proud. Very Christmassy packaging there. So it looks like you get four spheres. And uh, let's take a peek. Oh, well, I don't know. Should I pull this? Up? Ah, yes, you pull this out first, apparently. Oh, yeah, that's more like it. That would have been impossible for me to pull out. Oh, here we go. Look at that. That's rad. Come on. Every Christmas tree needs... Now, how cool would it be, though, if you did a Christmas tree that was nothing but these? So you'd need to buy, like... Mm, there's only four. I would think you'd probably need to buy at least six boxes to be able to do a tree upright with just spheres and then get the big one to put on the top. Come on. Nothing says Felice Navidad like this. Am I right? Little, little, little baby, little baby spheres. Mika, come here. Let's, let's do a recreation here. This is a scene from Phantasm. I guess, you know, a little and then boom, right into your little noggin. You don't like it. Little drill, no? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, these are badass. This is really cool. They're heavy too. They're like a nice weight. Not heavy heavy, not gonna pull your tree down heavy, but they're a decent weight. You would probably have to put them on a on a, a strong branch, otherwise your tree could do a little of that action. Because they are they are a little I thought these were gonna be like, you know, the crappy old school ornaments that if you dropped them they just shatter. Now these things are that's solid. Hear that? Yeah. Oh yeah. These are rad. Definitely a cool idea. And a great gift for anybody at Christmas time, you know? Oh, okay, I didn't see this. Check out the snowman with the getting hit by the sphere. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> and if you were to tell me, when I was a youngster growing up, a total phantasm nerd, that one day this would come out as a product, I'd be like, yeah, right. Sentinel Sphere Ornament Set. Say that 10 times fast. Sentinel Sphere Ornament Set. Right. Phantasm 2. Officially licensed. Phantasm 2. Paragon FX. Look on the back here. We'll take a look at the company's logo and everything. All right. Let's move on to the final the final uh, item today in the Paragon FX review. This is the one I actually purchased. I purchased this for my girlfriend, slash fiance, slash wife, whatever the hell you want to call her. We're just too busy to deal with it. I bought her the Lost Boys David's Bottle Replica because she loves the Lost Boys. I love the Lost Boys. You guys have known, you know, that I love the Lost Boys. You've seen my other videos and no, Prop store still hasn't given me my COA, but guess what? Paragon is more than happy to give me a COA for this item. And if I lost it, I think they'd give me another one. They're that kind of giving company. Here they are, Paragon effects. Let's see. I, I will say, first off, I'm assuming this is probably a Warner Brothers issue. Uh, the packaging, I think, is a little lacking. I mean, the box is super nice. Very sturdy, nice box, but I don't what is it? I don't even know. Is that just supposed to be blood? I'm guessing that's supposed to be blood. Not real sure on that. Um, I think I would have maybe gone with something else as far as a box design, but 
it's not really the box. I mean, yeah, the creep show box, way better, way better, I'll be honest. But it's what's in the, the box. It's what's in the box that matters. That's what we're talking about. So let's look at them and dying to open this one. I've had these for two days. I've been holding on to them until Brian got over here to film this damn thing. Then he took forever and I've had to do retake. I didn't want to get into it about Brian. <sighs> He's still here filming me, so I kind of have to be nice. But um, don't laugh, Brian. Be professional. All right, this thing's hard to open. Let's see. Which is good. You don't want your bottle to just come flying out. Yeah, all right, here we go. Oh, could that be the COA? <gasps> the coveted COA. Yes, it is. It's the COA. See how pretty? Look at that. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Now, I am a little disappointed the COA isn't individually numbered. And I noticed the box isn't either. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping maybe, ooh, look at that. I'll just cover that back up. I'm hoping maybe the bottle is somewhere on the bottom maybe, because I did notice that the shipping box that it came in said what number it was on the box. So, I, I, do you have to keep the shipping box to tell people which number you own? If that's the case, well, I mean, I still have the box, I do. But I'm hoping there's a number in here somewhere, because there's not, I don't think there is on the box anywhere, a number. Uh, okay. okay, that's cool. I didn't see the back. This makes up for the front a little bit. At least you got David on there. I was thinking it might have been a, a licensing thing for his image, but there he is. Okay, you're gonna get, you get, a, you get a couple points back. Anything on the bottom? No, so no number anywhere. But let's get to the business. Let's get to the bottle. Ho ho ho. Oh, it's got a cork and everything. Somebody open my bottle? That's some BS. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, there's nothing else in there. Let me just double check. Let's see if there's a little numbered thing in here. I don't think there is. Look underneath. Nope. Nope. Okay, bottle. You better have a number on you. Because that's one thing us collectors, we can be very bitchy about. No number, but trademark stuff on the bottom. I don't think that trademark stuff was in the movie. I don't think so. Okay, let me put the little... Now, one thing I was talking to <clears throat> the owner about, Rye is his name. Put that little bad boy on his head. Just kind of give it its full effect. Was that, you know that once this is handled by human hands and, and this starts to get a little more dirty and weathered, it, it'll start to appear more like it does in the film. And obviously you gotta fill it with some red liquid, I would think, right? Come on. But yeah, this is cool. This is very cool. This is a prop I never expected to see get made, you know? But it definitely needs the blood in the bottle to darken it up. I think one thing that I'm on first viewing, it looks too bright, and I think it's because I can see through the bottle. You need the dark liquid in there for the full effect. I don't know what would be the preferred dark liquid to put in a bottle like this that is going to stay in there forever, and then you got to think, is that going to mess your bottle up? I don't know. I guess you can always empty it and refill it. Anybody got any ideas out there? Make sure to comment below. Let us know what liquid you think would be the proper, uh, you know, stage blood. Is there, I don't know. I'm not an expert on liquids. Uh, but, yeah, this is really cool. Right here. I don't know where we're going to display this. I'm going to put it near the jackets. Or if Nay's going to put it in her room with her little, she got a little... Like a little mini Lost Boy shrine going on up there. I don't know. But this is cool. I, I am just slightly disappointed that it doesn't have its individual number. I got to give Rye a call and go, brother, how, how did this happen? Yeah. It says limited to 750 units. Hold on. I'm going to go get the box. All right. So I grabbed the boxes. Notice something else. We'll start with the Creepshow one. 
the creep shell one also look number 204 of 250 so the numbers on this box the box you don't want to keep but it's not anywhere on the item that to me is something i will talk to rye about that i as a collector i think that the item should actually have the number on it the coa or whatever that comes with it should have the number on it and once again Here's the Lost Boys bottle. Number, I don't know, what do you think? Is, is that zero six one or is that six six? I don't, I don't even know what that says. I don't even know what number I have. Anyway, um, or that could be zero zero one. I got number one. No, I don't know. Anyway, of 770, that's an odd number. Does that say 770? No, this is 750. Lack of consistency, too. Can't lose my COA. God, God knows that'll haunt me. I don't want to go through that again. Um, yeah, so this of 770, but this says limited to 750 units. Hmm. So, I would, uh, I would definitely, that's something I would like to see, you know, just like have a little, you know, hand write the thing in there. Or on the bottle, on the bottom, right here, with a Sharpie. I would have been fine with. Boom, boom, boom. Just something you can go, boom, there it is, you know, whatever. That is my only real criticism. Uh, as a collector, as an uber nerd, we like these things. But this is very cool. This is something I wouldn't have ever thought would get made. And when I saw it go on sale, I immediately bought it like that. Because A, I just never thought I'd see one ever made. And B, you know, myself and Nay both love the Lost Boys, so... I knew she would dig this, and she was a birthday gift for her, so don't say anything. Happy birthday. Yeah, there it is. So, Paragon FX, Paragon FX Group. Thank you so much, Rye and Paragon. I appreciate it. I'm definitely down to take a look at a few others, and if you guys are interested, go online. Their website is, got to be somewhere. Come on, guys, you don't put your damn website on something. <laughs> right here, paragonfxgroup.com. So go to paragonfxgroup.com and get on buying this stuff because God only knows how many there are because we don't really know exactly what the numbers are. Because <laughs> be worried, that could be 661. That means there's less than 100 left. So hurry and get your bottle today. And uh, the Christmas ornaments and everything. These are this is, these are rad. These are rad. This is cool stuff. They've got a kick-ass uh, Blade Runner replica Deckard gun, which is really cool. They got some Batman stuff. They got some other cool horror stuff coming soon that is pretty badass. I got a little. I might have got a little sneak peek, if you will. But cool stuff coming. You guys are gonna want to keep an eye on this company, Paragon FX Group. Again, check them out online. See you in the next episode. Hey everybody, so people have been wondering, Sean, how do we get merch? How do we get t-shirts? How do we get Horrors Hall Ground stuff? How do we get throw rugs? How do we get Thing With Two Heads stuff? How do we get blankets? You want a onesie for a baby, a kazoo. I don't think they do kazoos. Some people might even want Hollywood's Hall of Ground stuff. The collection with Sean Clark, nobody wants to wear that as a shirt. Anything that they'll slap the logos on, you want to be able to get it, right? So if you go to tpublic.com backslash user, Backslash malfunction. I think that's it. Yeah, tpublic.com <laughs> backslash user backslash malfunction. You can order all kinds of good stuff. And people have been asking for Mark Beer's latest design. Mark Beer rules. He does a lot of our artwork, pretty much all of our artwork. The skull design. See it here? We're going to make that available now. Go to the website and order it now on anything you want. Am I moving my arms enough? I hope so.
you want shirts, you want hoodies, you want things like that, because you dig it. Tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting the channel. The more we grow this thing, the more content we can bring, the more stuff we can share with you guys. That's what it's all about, man. Being a community, like-minded people, into the same shit. Rock and roll.